Okay, so we got the bad ending of Caleb. Um, we're gonna redo it. So anyways, I was asleep in what felt like no time, and I was looking forward to tomorrow a lot. Chapter 10, Middle Game. With good developments, always came bad. It was how life often flowed, it seemed. The moment you found determination, the world would shake things up, a new assignment. This time to Pythia, the capital of Delphine, a place I never thought I'd see in person. I suppose it was more neutral than bad. Despite what Caleb and I discussed a few days ago, there was no way for me to refuse to go. It involves relics. And even though we didn't quite understand how I interacted with them, the fact remained I was the only, rem I was the only remotely reliable way we had to shut them off if someone tried to use them against us. So when they assigned me, I didn't argue. Not this time. As we walked down the unfamiliar streets, I was trying not to stare like a wide-eyed tourist, though I must have been doing a terrible job of it. Caleb kept gently grabbing the top of my head and forcing me to look straight forward. I'm sorry, I've never been here before. You're supposed to be looking natural. I don't think you grabbing my head looks natural either, if we're being honest. I'd stop doing it if you'd stop looking around like you've never been here before. I haven't ever been here before. We just went over this. Are you too bickering again? Man's voice sounded in my head. Tiny and with a slight crackle as she spoke over the communications channel. You've been dating for like three days and you've already sounded like you've been married for 20 years. Shut up. I hope your lover's, lover's quarrel isn't distracting you from a person you're supposed to be following. I haven't lost sight of him and even if I did, that's why the two of you are standing by, isn't it? I focused on our target instead of Van's remark about me and Caleb's relationship status. If only because somehow that still felt stranger than the fact that I was in Pythia, the capital of Delphine, on a mission. And I was still annoyed by how they all found out right away. There are no secrets in this stupid place unless you're me. At any rate, it was, it was, it was day at the moment. Well, there's simulated day, so it wasn't that different than being on the day side of the planet in that regard. But the city itself was so strange. It was darker, colder, harsher somehow, and it was increasingly difficult to keep sight of the man ahead as we tailed him down the streets. The more I had, at last, had to break through. They tracked another of these shipments of relics that was what landed my team in the middle of Pythia, trailing someone we believed to be the contact for said shipment. I kept wondering if this is what Ari and Caleb had done when they were scouting me out. Shit. I sent my eyes back to the man in front of us. He'd pause and look back. Oh no. He's running. I see him. He grabbed my arm and started sprinting a split second before the man did. Enhance your speed so you can keep up. Got it. We had never done this exact technique before, but I was getting good enough at mimicking. I could watch what he did to match it. The man swung into an alley out of sight, and we followed. Get ready to shield yourself. He's probably armed. Be careful, guys. We're a few minutes behind you at this point. Understood. When Caleb and I veered into the alley seconds later, the man was nowhere in sight. Caleb whipped his head to the side and tilted it towards an open door on the left that was opened a crack. A silent indicator where the man had gone. I nodded. He crept to the door with me right behind him. Don't expand your spear in the building unless I tell you to. If there are PSI detectors, I'd rather them not go off. We don't want them to find out that we're espers, unless it's necessary. I understand. Caleb drew a weapon from a holster inside his jacket as he pushed the door open and stepped inside. I followed behind him, my only weapon in my PSI burst, assuming he trusted me enough to use them. Caleb had stopped just inside in the deep shadows by the door. As I sighted close to him, he put an arm out, pushing me further behind him. His head was tilted, probably advanced in his hearing to listen for the man. Because his biokinesis was internal, he could do it without setting off PSI sensors if there were any. We didn't know the man was familiar with this building, but since we didn't want to tip them off as to who we were, we couldn't take any chances. There was a soft scrape to the left above us. If I could hear it, Caleb definitely did. He looked that way, eyes glinting gold in the dark. There was a prickle down my spine and ting tingling numbness that shot into my fingers. Danger. I grabbed Caleb's shoulder and threw up a shield the same instant I heard the whine and discharge of a sonic weapon. It hit the shield hard, causing me to flinch under impact and the pressure of the sound waves, but the shield held. A metallic clang came from above us, the sound of a weapon following the rapid footsteps. Caleb pushed me back against the wall. Stay here. He ran into the light, craning his neck at the sound as he sought out the fling target. We're here. There was no hope for the poor man at that point. I heard man's voice, Ari's too. The man shouted, but it was cut short with the following by heavy thud and more shouts. I couldn't see them up there, but it was clear what was happening. I wouldn't struggle if I were you. You're not going anywhere. We have a few questions for you. The whole thing was kind of anticlimactic. Not 
that I was complaining, but there wasn't another possible outcome with a normal guy and three elite espers. Four, if you were to count me. Though I still wasn't really feeling the whole elite thing. Ari and Van teleported down to where Caleb and I were at that point. Ari was holding onto the captured target and forced him to his knees in front of us. Do not attempt to flee, you will fail. I told you it would be a coffee and cake run. He holstered the weapon, eyeing the man who didn't seem like he had tried to flee. If he made a break for it, well... He wouldn't get far between Ari and Caleb. Poor guy. There's decidedly less coffee and cake than I expected. Also, good job back there. That shield of yours saved my ass. Sorry for activating my PSI without permission. Sometimes the situation calls for it. It was a smart decision. If you waited for the go-ahead, you might not have made it in time. So good call. Thanks. Van was already crouching down to question the man we'd apprehended at the re as the rest of us talked amongst ourselves. So now you're going to tell us where you're keeping the relics and who you're working for. I don't know what you're talking about. Ugh. Can we not play this game? You know what we're talking about. We know that you know. If you try to hide it from us, I'm afraid things will get a little ugly. She cracked her knuckles. I was just impressed that she could crack her knuckles, considering only two of them had been real bones. I hope she's bluffing. Who are you with? Crimson? Someone else? Nor? Yeah, we're not telling you that. You're the one answering the questions. Hmm. If he was assuming we were with Crimson or Nor, it meant we might be able to rule out those groups as the culprits. Unless it was a bluff. He doesn't seem smart enough to bluff, though. I don't believe he will answer our questions here and under the circumstances. Fine. Fine. We'll take him back to HQ for questioning there. Should have answered us here. We're way nicer than the interrogation guys back there. I already pulled the man struggling to his feet. It didn't seem like it would be easy to get his cooperation. Half the team should stay here, check around, see if we can find some leads. We don't want someone to catch on that. This guy was captured. And if there is a delivery happening soon, we need to get there and intercept it. Alright, well, Ari definitely has to go back. Maybe you and I can- Hey! The man slumped forward without warning, causing Ari to stagger under a sudden dead weight. He let out a strange gurgle as Ari lowered him to the ground. No! She hurriedly knelt, blocking my view of him, but not before I saw the long stream of bright red blood. Shit! Are you serious? Vanessa, hold him down. He's going into convulsions. But why? What could be so important that he'd rather die than be captured? Caleb put his forearm over my eyes, pulling me into some sort of half-hug as he turned me away. Don't look. I'm afraid he's dead. That fast? This is unusual for this type of case. I don't believe anyone would go this far for a simple money scheme, not unless they were compelled to, which still points to something bigger than just a money scheme. Magnus did say as much. Alright, get into the tower before they lose the chance to extract his memories. Hopefully it's not too late to get something out of him. Understood. He touched the man's shoulder and they were gone. Extracting memories? From a dead person? Hopefully. One of our top bishops has the ability, but only if he, only if it's very soon after death, so it depends if Ari can get her to him in time. That's a little weird. To say the least, I wasn't aware something like that was possible. Working with the dead memories is safer since there are any defenses. It's still odd to think about memories are still there after a person dies. What do you think happens to all the information stored in the brain? Do you think it just vanishes just because a person's heart stops? A computer's memory doesn't vanish because you turned it off. That's true, but we're not computers. The human brain is one of the most powerful computers there is. But they need to work quick, because once the brain begins to deteriorate, the information is corrupted or vanishes. So, poor guy. If he had just worked with us, it probably wouldn't have ended up too bad for him. But now? What happens next? The man was our only lead. I was extremely conscious of the fact that Caleb was still holding me close with one arm around. As Van leaned down to scoop up the weapon and the man had been holding earlier, we keep looking around. We'll check out the surrounding area, try to figure out where he was going. Why don't you set up a spear, expand it, and see if you can find anything suspicious, and I'll do the same. She frowned, pursuing her lips as she stared at the two of us, narrowing her eyes a bit. Getting anything interesting? A slow smirk spread across her face. Well, interesting, maybe. Helpful? No. He rolled his eyes at her, finally releasing me. What about that weapon? Nothing but psychometry isn't my forte. We could try to get Nori to check it. She handed it over to me, but nothing happened. At least for now, I shook my head and she took it back. Well, there's nothing for it. We'll keep looking, and if the tower found something, they'll contact us. We'll give it a couple hours before we head back ourselves. There's also no point in wasting energy walking around without a lead. I'll be going. Probably best to move outside of Nora's sphere while I look so we don't overlap. She left quickly, decking out of the building and back into the alley before disappearing from sight. I don't know how much help I'll be- Look. All you need to do is try. No one is expecting miracles, Nori. We know better than anyone how this stuff will work. Sometimes this is just how it is. I just feel like I should be able to help. You already have. 
Those high expectations of yours are setting yourself up for disappointment. We're all just human. Yeah, that can teleport across the planet in an instant and extract memories from the dead. He scoffed, moving over to the door to check outside, then shut it. Listen, the big reason we didn't get Ari to search over from the start is because these people aren't idiots. They've got their own espers and they have PSI depend dappeners to create artificial cages to keep us out. Those things will alert them the moment they come into contact with the outside PSI waves, so we couldn't risk looking around that way. But at this point, it doesn't matter. We just want to find them, so we'll risk alerting them to our presence. But I still want you to be cautious. We don't even know what your full range is yet. Don't overtax yourself trying to see more than you're capable of. Expand your PSI slowly, very slowly. The moment you see evidence that someone knows you're there, pull out. Got it? I understand. I'll do my best. I'll keep this area secured while you're occupied. All right, I'll get to it. Setting up a sphere was easy. It was just like opening up my awareness to my surroundings. Ari and I had worked on it a lot. Expanding the sphere was what when it got tricky. Sometimes there was too much to see and hear and experience. It was very overwhelming. Ari was still working with me on how to stay focused, so I was just going to have to do my best. I breathed, circling my PSI around me. Gradually expanding the sphere outward like shining as ever increasing spotlight on my surroundings Even though my eyes were shut. I could see Caleb glowing bright in the rose gold I'd become I'd come to associate with him I tried to ignore the little pale flames. I knew were rodents lurking in the building. There were no other people nearby none I could sense anyways I expanded outward outside the building to the alley and nearby buildings further. Several conversations pricked my consciousness, nothing note that I could see. I wasn't sure how precise my clairvoyance was. Perhaps I was missing things, so I didn't think so. I kept expanding outward. There was Vanessa. I felt her look my way, but kept going, searching further, further still. Caleb said not to overdo it, but I hadn't hit my limit. There was something at the edge of my spear, something unusual. I looked that way and a shaft of ice went straight to my heart. Stop looking at me. Um, since we failed, we're gonna pull back right away. Who is that? Caleb told me to retreat the moment I sensed someone else, and that's when I tried to do it. Darkness closed in after me. Stop looking at me. The voice was coming from all around me, everywhere. His eyes could see me. He could see me. He knew my name. He knew everything. His eyes. I couldn't escape. I, I couldn't breathe. Nori. And I was back with Caleb, half curled over, wheezing. I straightened up pulling on his arm, tugging him towards the door. We have to go. We have to go now. We need to get out. No, we, what? Now they'll find us. He looked at me and we were running. I just clung to him and shivered. I still didn't even know what that was. Van, we're pulling out. Got it. What the hell was that? I think it was a mind bomb. She, she pulled back as fast. She pulled back fast, but it was so bad, especially for a newbie. Damn it. Hold on, Nori. We're getting out of here. Why does this always happen to me? I hate it. Most of your tests came back with no irregularities. He frowned down at the display in his hands. As expected, there are still lingering symptoms within the amygdala and the hypothalamus. Typical, typical of a mind bomb. It's difficult to tell how severe it would be if it, how severe it would have been if you didn't pull back when you did. You have elevated levels of folic acid in your brain synapses, commonly associated with prolonged PSI use. Given you were on assignment, I'm not surprised to see that. Cortisol levels are within the normal range, and the somatic function is otherwise normal. Does that mean I'm free to go? He studied me without speaking for a moment. Calm, no signs of avoidance or denial. I already told you I'm fine. A patient's assessment of whether they are fine is frequently at odds with the doctor's assessment of their actual well-being. You'll forgive me if I defer to my own, more knowledgeable opinion. He just said there were no unexpected irregularities. You were in a state of extreme emotional distress when you returned with Caleb and you were encounter and you encountered a mind bomb. Given your lack of defenses, it is surprising you didn't return with permanent brain damage. Yeah, you mentioned that. Mind bombs are powerful psychic traps, Nori Adonis, and you walk straight into that one. I don't know how you're conscious right now. In many situations, while recklessly expanding your spear in an unknown area and encountering someone's trap, one would have taken more damage. I wasn't being reckless. It is reckless for you to be in the field at all right now. I don't get a say if I go out or not. Of course you get a say, Nori Adonis. Do you truly believe anyone here can make you do something you do not wish to do? It would be nice if that were true. It is true. He set the tablet on the counter and sighed. You're free to go. And Nori, I have seen you far too much in my infirmary for your short tenure here at Endgame. I don't wish to see you here again soon. I'll try. Do better than try. Right. Thank you. I slipped off the bed and out into the hall, grateful he wasn't keeping me here for observation this time. I was surprised to find Caleb waiting for me not far from the room, though I guess I shouldn't have been. Were you waiting? What do you think? I think you're cranky again. Sorry, I'm not trying to be. 
How was it? He fell, into, he fell into step beside me as we headed out of the medical ward. Tests were normal except for a few small irregularities. He's not keeping me for observation. And apparently I should be very grateful I don't have brain damage. He likes to throw that one around. I noticed. Are you okay? I mean, okay? I trust you're medically fine. But you know, I was pretty shaken up earlier, but I'm fine now. It's already faded like a bad dream. Ben and Ari wanted to be here when you were released. They had to brief Magnus on what happened. Van said she only saw it from far away. I just wish someone told me mind bombs were a thing. Well, it's late for that and I'm sorry. Well, you couldn't have known that there was something like that waiting for me. For anyone who poked around, what exactly happened? I'm not sure. I just felt like someone else was there. Have you ever heard of sleep paralysis? Yeah, I don't know much about it though. It sometimes happens when someone's getting enough sleep. I've had a few episodes of it during exam season when all I was doing is cramming for tests and barely sleeping. There were a few moments when I would wake up and be unable to move. I couldn't see, but it felt like something was holding me down. And I knew, I knew there was something in the room with me. Something terrible was behind me, in the corners and the shadows watching. There was all, there was an all encompassing sense of dread, a fear so profound that it swallowed me whole. And all I could do was lie there, desperately trying to move until it passed, and I realized none of it was real. Sounds shitty. It's not fun, of course, it's just a hallucination, but the mind bomb felt the same way. Like there was someone there, like his eyes were all around me watching, like he could see everything about me, like he was peeling back layers until there were no more secrets. It was horrifying. Caleb stopped me there and pulled me into a tight hug. I'm sorry, you don't need to talk about it. I squeezed him back gently, grateful for his warmth. It's okay, I told you it's faded. Like a bad dream, it fades after you wake up, no matter how terrible. I mentioned that to you, you. He said that some mind bombs induce a state of consciousness similar to the transition between sleeping and waking. The forms of foundation for the hallucinations they induce. Hypnagot, girl. Some type of hallucinations, stronger ones uh, inflict a lot more damage. This one apparently wasn't that bad, I guess, so it's not surprising that it faded as fast as it did once I was free of it. He thinks the fact that you got away from the area so fast helped. Well, take comfort in the fact that scanning an active awake mind is difficult even for the best bishops. There's virtually no way someone could, someone would scan you and gain any pertinent information. And Van observed the mind bomb because it happened at the edge of her sphere. Don't worry, all your dirty secrets are safe. What kind of dirty secrets do you think a student from New Amion has? I don't know. You seem awfully worried. I'm worried I revealed endgame secrets, not mine. There would have been disruptions in synthetic activity or in your PSI ways that someone tried to scan you, and you would have noticed that, so stop worrying. Sure, I'll just do that on command. Glad to see you're getting better at the following orders. I elbowed him in the side lately. Come on, you need rest, but Magnus wanted you to stop by when you were released. It's good to see you're feeling well. We were all quite worried about you, Nori. Well, so you're aware I'm under strict orders not to show up in the infirmary again soon. We'll have to protect you extra carefully during the next assignment. There's already another, not for a few days. We weren't able to pull as much information from the man you brought back to us as we would have liked. He had very peculiar sort of brain damage to his memory centers. The autopsy report is still not in on that, so we're not sure what happened. It's possible it was deliberate. Deliberate? Was he an esper? No, but as you experience today, it's not that difficult to set up PSI programs in advance. The mind bomb is one type. It's possible the man had a PSI program that damaged his memory centers upon death. That would be a surprising amount of caution from the group. Everything this group does is cautious. The bomb Nori encountered probably took some time to set up. Whoever these people are, they do not want us to find them. I wanted to hear more about your experience with that. Sometimes the particular hallucinations involved in the trap of that sort of thing can be a clue. It was kind of non-specific, just another presence and feeling like I was being examined, like being devoured by it. I stopped at a previously forgotten incident, rose back to the forefront of my memory. Devoured by someone's gaze, by eyes, I've heard that before. Nori? What is it? I don't know, maybe nothing. I was just reminded of something. Back when I first was recruited, back at the vivarium we went to, when we got separated, I ran to that man again. The one from the incident in New Amien. He was lurking in the shadows there, like he'd been waiting for me. We are certain that someone's bishops predicted our arrival. That has to be how they found us. Anyway, he attacked me. He attacked me. He attacked me all. He attacked me. There was the reason I fled back to the main area. He didn't make sense in any of our interactions, but that day was different. Something had clearly happened to him. He looked different and he was saying odd things. Curious that you never mentioned this before. No one bothered to, debr to debrief me, Magnus. And I've been a little preoccupied until this very moment. I had no reason to think much about the incident, but I'm telling you now. So maybe let me finish. 
Well, it's good to see you're treating me like everyone else does these days. Several high suspicious snorts came from where the others were sitting. They were not good at hiding their laughter at all. It's been a really long day. In that case, we'll try to wrap this up fast. Please continue. What made you think of this man out of the blue? Well, he said something about being devoured by eyes. Well, at the same time, it sounded a bit deranged. Yeah, but that was the exact sensation I had. It's hard to put it into words, but a few minutes ago, that's the exact phrase that came into my mind, and then I remembered the incident in the vivarium. The psychometric experience you had in the history? Did they not also mention someone having eyes elsewhere? Yeah, that's right. They did. An interesting coincidence. Unless it isn't one. The man who attacked Brazel with that relic also mentioned hearing eyes that they were in his head. What the hell is going on? Does the phrase Fisher King mean anything to you, Nori? No, why? It's a phrase that Morai picked up from the dead man's memories. Does it ring any bells for me? I see. Well, the more important thing they learned is that the three days, there will be an auction selling off some of these relics to wealthy buyers in Delphine. The council has decided that we will infiltrate the auction, or rather the Queen's Guard will. I believe you understand why your presence will be required, Nori. I do. We have reason to believe our replicating relic theory may be credible, and that said, relic will be among the items being auctioned. It's likely to draw many of the more powerful members of the Delphine underworld, and possibly some from our side of the planet as well. It'd be nice if we could get to the relics before the auction, but that seems unlikely. As such, we need a team there to intercept them if possible, to destroy them if it's not. We know where the auction would take place, not where the relics are being housed right now. Searching might prove problematic if there were as an additional traps waiting for any espers who dare poke around. And sometimes dealing with Delphine requires a more subtle touch. Unfortunately, we also don't know who's behind this. We've tentatively ruled out Crimson and Nor, and if it's not one of those two, I don't think it's likely to be any of the other families either. That leaves few other known factions, but we also can't rule out anyone. I've done some investigating. It wasn't easy to find, but there have been some relics related incidents in Delphine. The government has done a decent job of covering them up. Curiously, I believe Crimson has been trying to put a stop to the situation. Well, we've always had a strange relationship with Crimson and, the king, and their king, and one could argue the situation isn't any better for them than us. It is, after all, unmitigated chaos. I'm sure they'd feel different if the relics were in their hands and not someone else's as, as it is. That isn't the case which gives them incentive to find out who is disrupting things in their territory. So it stands to reason they might be at this auction as well. It does. He's thinking about seeing Jack there, isn't he? That could prove problematic, but if we had a common goal, I suspected it wasn't that easy. The enemy of our enemy was probably just another enemy, not a friend. In the meantime, I want you to rest, Nori. It has been an eventful past few days, and it's not over yet. This is not a time for her to be resting. If it is not over, then she should continue to train. Perhaps we should let Nora decide her own schedule going forward. I believe that if something important to her, it would be wise for her to focus on the skills she needs most for upcoming mission. She needs them all. There isn't time for her to learn them all, so I suggest to convince her to pick wisely. The meeting went on a little longer, discussing logistics of the auction mission. I was dragging by the time it was over. Caleb walked me back to my place and left me there, saying he had a few other things to look after. He promised to come check on me later. I spent a little while flopped on the sofa, groaning into a pillow before taking a long hot shower. A very long, very hot shower. I let the water drum over my tense shoulders, relaxing muscles, and just enjoyed not being in a dirty warehouse or the medical ward, or being attacked by someone's psychic trap. Still, had to file a briefing report, but I would put that off or just focus on relaxing. And answering a message I got from mom earlier. I finally could answer her without having it go through admin thanks to a little talk with Magnus. He bypassed their controls and restored full system access. Caleb had suggested we talk to him instead of trying to deal with the red tape in admin. One of the best suggestions he's made so far. I was still towel drying my hair when I walked into the living room. I was also still wrapped in a towel, only a towel, so when I found Caleb sitting on the sofa reading, I had to decide whether or not to feign outrage. I said, I settled for rolling my eyes and joining him on the sofa. Not gonna complain this time? No. At this point, I think I'm just gonna have to ask Magnus to lock you out of your own room and in revenge. Don't you dare, besides I'll backfire on you real quick. You don't want, me to, don't want him to owe me a favor. He owes me like 10 favors at this point. I doubt he sees it that way. So at this point, you're just gonna break in to prove you can? Yes. You're lucky you're pretty, so are you going to put some damn clothes on? Nope. Hope you're willing to deal with the consequences. Are you going to do that thing or you tell me you're a man and can't control yourself? Hell no, I was going to point out you're getting yourself a wet. I'm going to control myself just fine, thank you. 
So what did you want other than the proving break in? I wanted to make sure you were okay, you were okay and you have an annoying habit of saying you are when you're not. I really am okay, I promise I'm fine. And then I'm glad. I feel like something crappy happens every time we take you anywhere. He brushed my hair from my face, pressing a kiss to my forehead. It was one of those surprising, tender gestures that surfaced sometimes. The memory of the dark passion from that kiss in the training room came rushing back. A forehead kiss wasn't what I expected from him, but it was sweet. I know none of this is easy, and I admire how strong you're being, and I don't think I'm that strong. I just do what I need to. That's strength as well. He wrapped me into a gentle embrace, resting his chin on my wet hair. One hand swept carefully down my back over the towel. I guess you haven't eaten. Go into the lounge in a bit. Want to join me? Sounds great. I'll let you get dressed and meet you there. I'll see you there in a little while. Sounds good. He left after that and I flapped back, letting out a soft groan. What a day. I went to finish drying my hair and getting dressed so we could meet up at the lounge. Despite everything, I had a feeling I'd be too exhausted to not sleep well tonight. A good night's sleep was definitely something to look forward to. Almost as much as dinner with Caleb. Maybe more. Oh, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't tell him that. Alright, everybody. Thank you for listening. That was a good chapter. Um, yeah, and we'll continue. See ya.